It's my favorite time of year. No, not the part about where it's 100 degrees in September, but the part where the prospects are all hype and no substance. Pretty soon, though, that's going to change. Avalanche Rookie Camp starts tomorrow, and the Rookie Tournament is within the week, so what better time to do a prospect pyramid? Oh my goodness gracious! Was it in time? Score! Justice is served! A couple quick ground rules to start off the pyramid is for players that are still eligible for the Calder, also adding the stipulation that they have to be 23 and younger. That means they've played less than 25 NHL games, and they are 23 and younger. The one notable exclusion here is Logan O'Connor, who many do still view somewhat as a prospect. The concept of the prospect pyramid is that you don't have to do an order rank. There's no point in arguing over your fifth and sixth best prospect if they're both the same tier of player. However, many people still do like to pick a number one overall prospect within a system. And if I absolutely had to pick, it would be Bo Byram. He is the best prospect in the AB system. However, for the first time this year, I cannot separate Bo Byram into a tier by himself as a prospect. I have to put Alex Newhook into the top tier with him as well. The fact is, both of these players have already proved that they are completely NHL ready, should play significant, if not full-time, in the NHL this year. And in the longer term, both of these players have potentials to be stars in the NHL. If the Avs truly are to be cup contenders, they likely need one or both of these players to grow into an important role on the team this season. If you watched the Avs last year, I don't have to explain it to you. The highlights are there. Everyone already knows what these kids are capable of. Where the fun begins, and I think where you start to see the real true strengths of the Avs prospect pool, is in the second tier. The Avs have five players currently in that tier. Realistic expectations here. Some of these players have already played NHL games, expect them to get more, and the ones who haven't, it's pretty easy to project them to get NHL games at some point. Not all of them are going to stick in the NHL, that's just reality, but you would expect a couple of them hopefully do. If they do end up getting that, the Avs are looking great in the immediate future. Most of these picks are pretty self-explanatory. Martin Kaut and Sampo Ranta are the two that already have NHL games. Kaut, this year in particular, is going to be huge for him. This is his opportunity to prove that he can stick in the NHL. He may not start with the Avs, but at some point in the year, he's going to get a call-up, and that will be his chance to get there and stay there. Ranta did play in a couple playoff games in the NHL last year, and while he did not look great in that time, he still has shown a lot. He jumped into the AHL and fit in just fine playing his game. He looks extremely solid. The organization obviously likes him a lot if they were willing to play him in the playoffs, so he's going to have plenty of opportunity, and now he's going to start to live up to it. The AHL, likely for the majority, if not all of the year here, but look for him to potentially be a depth, depth call up for the abs and then start getting more consistent games in 2022. Barron is pretty self-explanatory. He's a first round pick, played great in the QMJHL last year, as well as a strong finish in the AHL to the season. And this will be his first full year in pro hockey. If he continues to play solid hockey, the abs are pretty bare, especially on the high end when it comes to defensive talent beyond the obvious in Bowen Byram. With Timmins gone, the path is very open for Barron to push his way towards an NHL roster spot. Could potentially even see games this season. Foodie is kind of the odd one here. He's probably the furthest away from an NHL roster spot today of all of these five players. He's only 19 years old, for starters, and he doesn't really have a ton of pro experience nor does he have a super easy path to the NHL. With that being said, at 18 years old, he played in the AHL because of the COVID protocols, and he fit in just fine. He proved a lot and moved up a lot of people's boards quite a bit. Shout out to AJ Hayfley, who had him up here from the beginning and loved the pick. He fits in extremely well with the Avs with very, very high-end skating and has an opportunity to cement himself as... Probably a future center call-up, more on the Avs center situation as far as prospect pools in the next tier. We'll get to that, but right now, Foodie may be legitimately their best center prospect not in the NHL. 
New Hook's going to be in the NHL here. Come on, let's be real. And last in this tier, you have this year's first rounder in Olausen. He has pro experience playing in Sweden. He's come over to North America to play in Canadian Juniors this year. He's up here. The hype for now remains real. You're going to put a first round pick in your second tier. If you don't, Why'd you pick him in the first round? Third tier. We're now moving away from such surefire situations. I do believe there is NHL talent fully in this tier, but it's likely some of these guys, if not most of them, aren't going to get full-fledged opportunities. With that being said, I still think this is a strong, strong tier, and I certainly think the Abs will get NHL games out of this tier potential for NHL players, but there's still things to prove. This tier has six players, Drew Hellison, Colby Ambrosio, Sean Behrens, Alex Bocage, Shane Bowers, and Eustace Ananen. We're going to start at the bottom. Eustace Ananen makes this tier because he's the Avs' top goalie prospect. There is a good amount of hype about him. However, he's starting his first year in North America this year. May start in the ECHL, may start in the AHL. Will likely get a decent amount of games in the AHL this year. There is a good reason to be hyped. He's a big goalie who can play well, but he still has a lot to prove in North America, so you can't really put him higher than this tier. The other one at the bottom is maybe the most interesting prospect for the Avs for all of the wrong reasons. Shane Bowers is still in the organization. He has still not played an NHL game. He did not have a great season last year, and the Avs have looked past him every single time there's been an opportunity for a forward call-up. For whatever reason, he's clearly not doing what the org wants to see out of him on the whole to get an NHL opportunity. This is not a Martin Kaut situation where there's been some opportunities, there's been some good, there's been some bad. Even when Shane Bowers was playing well, he got overlooked for an NHL call-up. The question here is becoming, what are the Avs going to do with Shane Bowers? Because I do believe there is an NHL caliber player in there, but if he's not going to get an opportunity in the organization, then he's going to just be toiling away in the AHL. Same with Kaut, this is likely Bauer's last year, at least in Colorado, to get an opportunity to play in the NHL. If it doesn't go well, don't be surprised to see him go to a different team and play NHL games in a different sweater. Now that we've covered those, the rest of this tier I think is a lot more fun. You have the Avs second round pick from this year in Sean Barons, another solid defenseman that does help fill out a fairly empty prospect pool on the defensive side with a little bit of high end. Probably not super high end, probably not even the level of a Justin Barron high end, but something that can be a fun player. He's another player that fits very well in the AV system, is a very good skater, has a lot of the skills that are a necessity in the modern NHL game, is going to be a touch on the smaller side, and we are going to see where and how he plays in the NCAA in this coming year. If he adjusts very well to playing against bigger, stronger bodies and adds on some weight for himself, he could move up the list. Alex Bocage is a pretty simple one. There's not a whole lot of complicated things going on here. He has an NHL-ready shot today. He could score on NHL goaltenders today. He's moving into the AHL this year and is going to get the opportunity to show that craft in pro hockey. I guarantee his shot will be an asset. It's how well does he round out the rest of his game, particularly his skating. Can he keep up at the pro level? Can he create space and take advantage of it at the pro level? I struggle to move him up the list a little bit because I do think he lacks one of those skills that is very, very important in the NHL today. But look, if you can fire a puck past an NHL goalie, teams are going to give you a look. At the top of the list, you have Drew Hellison and Colby Ambrosio. We'll start with Ambrosio because I think he is probably my personal favorite prospect in the pool. Very much so on the smaller side, but a very, very fun player to watch. He has the ability to have explosive high-end offense. Wasn't super consistent with it this year, playing on a very strong NBC, along with Alex Newhook and Drew Hellison. Imagine that. But this was just his freshman year in college. After getting drafted, he was fun. And that's a great start. He put himself on a very strong path for a third-round pick to earn an ELC with the Avalanche in the future. There still is two more years likely, certainly at least one more year, of college left for him. But if he can continue on the path he's set out, he could be a name that gets talked about a lot more in a couple of years. Hellison? 
may go down as the most improved prospect from the last time I did one of these pyramids. And he's still in the third tier. I get that. But he really rounded out his game extremely well this year. He was already very, very strong defensively on that Boston College roster, but he took a step forward in his offensive game across this year, showing he can be an effective player on that side of the ice. You still, of course, want to see more from him. And this coming season, he really is going to get a chance to be one of the top players on that entire team, like so, a little bit more to prove here, but if you ask me today, I think the Avs are very likely to give him an ELC. Again, the depleted defensive pool. He could be a name we're talking about with the Eagles as one of their top four defenders as soon as next year. These top three tiers are what make the Avs prospect pool so strong. They have a bundle of prospects that you're hopeful, if not damn near demanding near the top that they get NHL games. The bottom three tiers, things start to get a little bit murkier for a number of reasons varied across the way. This fourth tier is kind of the mystery basket. You don't really know. You know there's some talent here. You know there's some opportunity, but there are serious questions left. The first two, Daniel Zaravlov and Nikolai Kovalenko, question there is obvious. Are they going to come over from Russia? Right now, Kovalenko extended his time in Russia with a contract, so he won't be coming over this year and very likely not next year. And Zaravlyov has one year left on his contract as well. So the question with them is, are they willing to come over? And if so, can the Avs make it work? Especially in Kovalenko's case, I don't see him coming over to play in the AHL. So it would have to be an NHL opportunity to convince him. The answer there right now is maybe. We're just going to have to wait and see. The other two in Miner and Bujalski are, well, Miner's a goaltender, so let's start with Hockey Voodoo right there. He did show well in his short AHL stint last season and played very, very well in the WHL when he was there. He earned himself a contract. That's great. But that's just the starting point. If he wants to move up this list and make himself a real contender as a potential option in the AHL, let alone the NHL, he needs to play well and he's going to have to earn it. In Bujalski's case, he is an overager. He played as a 20-year-old in the USHL. He played great, good enough for the Avs to draft him. That's awesome. But now he's going to be moving into college hockey and we're going to see what it's like for him to play against more of his peers. He's a big guy. He used his size effectively against younger players in the USHL. What happens when he goes against the same size bodies, the same age players as him? If he continues to be effective, great. Maybe you have something there. But again, he hasn't proved anything at that level yet. Moving into the fifth tier, and this tier is kind of what I start to see as long shots. You have Nate Clearman, Nikki Lieberman, Tyler Weiss, and Taylor McCarr. Nate Clearman may be the odd one out here because he does have an NHL contract with the Avalanche, and with an empty Eagles flock, you have Barron and him as the two proper prospects on the AHL team before the Avs, so there could be opportunity for him there but he still has a long path to go to get to the NHL from where he is. He's a great kid. He's a great work ethic, was a captain at Notre Dame when he was there. So there's a lot to like about him. He has to prove something at the pro level, though. Do you talk about someone like a Justin Barron? He came into the AHL in a short stint at the end of last year and immediately fit in. It's obvious that he has NHL caliber talent. Nate Clearman hasn't shown anything like that, so he's going to have to work up to it or find it in some way or another. Lieberman and Weiss are both going into their senior years in college and have not yet been given a contract by the Avs. It's possible that both of them could earn one, but they are going to have to play well and show the Avs something to get it. Lieberman, an offensive defenseman, that may help him. He is something that the Avs don't really have a lot of. Again, defensive prospect pool. It gets thin really, really quick, especially when people start to graduate. Weiss, he's a solid player. He has a little bit on the small side. He's been dealing with things like Crohn's disease and figuring that out as an NCAA player. The Avs give him a contract? Maybe, maybe not. If he goes off this year, it's possible. I could totally see some team giving him a try, but likely to hit college free agency, if I were to guess. Finally, you have Taylor McCarr. Kale's brother is going into his freshman year. He showed a little bit in the AJHL. You never know. He's the new shiny on the block from the seventh round. Threw him in the fifth tier because why not? Have a little fun. Have a little hope. The rest, the sixth tier, 
I'm calling that the everybody else tier. Realistically, these players have an extremely long path to an NHL contract, let alone the NHL itself. Players like Mutala and Burzan maybe shouldn't even be on this list. They are technically under the ABS umbrella with AHL contracts with the Eagles, but any NHL team could sign them if they show well. Their rights are not owned by the ABS. Shmakov has bounced around in Russia as well as other places at this point. He is a free agent in one year. It's just really hard to see the ABS signing him. And then you have Ahmad is still playing in Sweden. Hasn't shown a ton. Maybe the Avs find something they like. Maybe he wants to come over and earn it in the AHL. But it's, again, hard to see a path to the NHL. Finally, you have Henry and Steinberg. Henry is on the last year of his deal. He did manage to earn one with the Avs, but just has not been able to show anything at the AHL level. You can get into an argument about whether he was given enough opportunity and how much of that is on him. I'm not going to go into that in this video. Just know at this point, I don't see any other conclusion other than his time under the Avs umbrella being done after this year. Steinberg remains a total mystery. After foregoing his NCAA season to save the year of eligibility with COVID last year, he ended up getting injured in a Junior A League and it essentially did not play hockey at all last year. He was already questionably on the low side as far as talent and skill level in the prospect pool, and now he's a complete mystery with a year of development completely lost. It's hard to really see anything with him, but you never know. If he shows up and balls out this year, you revisit that conversation. So that about rounds it up. I think I didn't forget anyone this year, so we have that going for me. If I did forget someone, please let me know. I'll shoot you my thoughts on that player in the comments. Other than that, I really do think the Avs prospect pool on the high end has a lot of very, very nice pieces to come over the next three, four years that are going to help propel and keep the Avs window open. After that is where things are going to get real murky really fast. That is the end of this Avalanche Prospect Pyramid video. Thank you for watching. Head on over to thednvr.com to check out all of our amazing content. Hockey is finally starting up again, and I am so ready for it. I am Rudo, and really, though, 100 in September, that's got to stop. Avalanche time, come on, grab your friends. We're going to the playoffs again with Nate the Dog and Gabe the Big. The fun isn't over yet, it is Avalanche time.